Uh, the Georgia Republican Congressman Marjorie Taylor Greene has ignited another firestorm this time because she's suggesting without evidence that there's a link between mass shootings and prescription drugs. This comes in the wake of the mass shooting in Highland Park, Illinois, in which seven people were killed and at least 20 others were injured. Uh, is this something to be taken seriously or is this complete nonsense for Marjorie Taylor Greene? Here to talk about this is David Grasso, he's CEO of Bowl TV. That is a nonprofit media company that focuses on financial and cultural literacy. David, great to have you on the program. What do you make of what Marjorie Taylor Greene is doing? I never take Marjorie Taylor Greene seriously. I don't think she offers any serious policy solution. Whether you're liberal or conservative, you can see the type of person that Marjorie Taylor Greene is. You know, this is someone that promotes conspiracy theories, really came out of QAnon, says things that are, you know, and we don't say this hyperbolically, anti-Semitic, racist, everything. And I really think that she represents a fringe of the Republican Party that is unfortunately growing these days. And I hope, at least I'm crossing my fingers, that everyone understands that she represents a movement that is not only a danger to the Republican Party, but it's a danger to America. I think you're absolutely right. But there's a growing number of people out there who are putting aside Marjorie Taylor Greene who do think there's something about these SSRIs, the antidepressants, and perhaps that they may cause some sort of violent behavior. What do you make of that? You know, antidepressants is a really sensitive topic because as we've seen in most Western countries, not just in America, but in Canada and in the UK, the use of SSRIs or antidepressants is skyrocketing. So we really have to question what has changed. Have people always been depressed and now they're being treated? Or is it really just too many people being treated over treatment, especially in a place where we have for-profit healthcare like America? And I really think that this is an unsettled issue. I think what she's suggesting that antidepressants cause mass shootings is complete nonsense. Now, the role of SSRIs in mainstream society, I think that's a fair debate. Additionally, SSRIs, you know, contaminate water. And you know, sometimes uh, when you look at drinking water, all of us are drinking low doses of antidepressants and antibiotics and a lot of different types of issues. So this is something we have yet to contend with. But again, to suggest somehow that a uh, prescription drug, especially something like you know an SSRI, which has been around forever, is making people crazy enough to cause mass shootings is absolutely incorrect. Yeah, I mean, it certainly seems to me that there's a confusion by Marjorie Taylor Greene and others in terms of cause and effect. Because yes, people who are having delusions or violent thoughts are more likely to be prescribed antidepressants. Uh, but there's something like 42 million Americans who have been on antidepressants at one point or another. A growing number of women are on antidepressants, more and more people who are over age 60. And yet we don't see mass shootings being carried out by women, by uh, people over 60. But but putting all that aside and, and the nonsense as I take it, as I think you take it as well, this idea that somehow there's a connection between SSRIs and mass shootings. In terms of sort of though the, the, un, the misunderstood or not quite uh, maybe society hasn't really figured out exactly what is the impact of SSRIs. You mentioned that that is some there is a valid concern here. What are your concerns about it? I think the way we approach healthcare is fundamentally flawed, and some of it has to do with our for-profit healthcare system. But some of it is a problem around the world because if you consider in the UK, the national health system, you know, is free, and they're also over-prescribing SSRIs. And a lot of people just need classic therapy. And I think we lean too much on medical solutions when a lot of times what people just need is to analyze their lives and realize that really the problem isn't over prescription of depressants, antidepressants maybe, but more the epidemic of loneliness. And a lot of societies that are even ahead of the United States in terms of living in the future, specifically I think of South Korea and Japan as examples, these are highly developed societies. Poverty is at a minimum. They have national socialized medicine. And people are lonelier than ever. Their suicide rates are through the roof. A lot of Nordic countries fall into this. So we have to understand that modern society is creating new problems while solving old problems. And fundamentally, the problem is loneliness. And there are cures for loneliness. And that involves community, integration, and really belongingness. And we have to look at medicine holistically. Healthcare should be holistic. It cannot be all reduced to a pill. Of course, if you are chemically depressed, you should be a candidate for SSRIs. I have friends who are chemically depressed and the pill has changed their lives. 
but it's not for everyone. On the issue of loneliness, uh, how much of this has to do with simply, I mean, the, the world we live in now with social media and so many of us live our lives behind screens as opposed to you know, going out into the streets and talking with our neighbors and talking to people on the phone. Everything now seems to be through a device, which seems to sort of cut people off. Yeah, and this is a major problem and it's only bound to get worse. Now with the dawn of the metaverse and the virtualization of everything. David, when you were at a different network, I would come on your show and see you in person. Now we're doing this over Zoom or Skype or you know whatever. And it feels like it's not the same type of authentic connection. And in fact, we're accelerating towards a world that is largely virtual. And this is a big unsolved problem across all societies. And we have to at least recognize that talking about mass shootings, talking about political extremism like Marjorie Taylor Greene, these are unintended consequences of a society that lacks connection, that feels increasingly isolated. Well, David, I gotta say, even just seeing you on my screen, that is a cure for my loneliness. It doesn't have to be in a studio, although I certainly prefer seeing you there. But uh, but nonetheless, on this sort of issue in terms of uh, America's, um, the way we sort of take care of each other. And you mentioned that it, it seems like it's almost like a uniquely American thing that we are so interested in sort of a quick fix for the problems, that there isn't perhaps uh, the appetite, there isn't perhaps the aptitude for sort of digging deeper into ourselves that here in the United States, whether it's you know mental health, whether it's back pain and we take Percocet, there's always a pill for what ails us. Yeah, well, you know, my parents are chiropractors and that was always their argument. It's like, listen, you can take the pill, but why don't you address the underlying problem? If you're depressed, maybe you should analyze the stress and your your current conditions of how you're living, etc. And really politics is like that too, right? We think all the guns are no guns. Abortion, all abortions, no abortion. You know, and we really have to think about compromise. Political extremism is very damaging in our country, as we're seeing through Marjorie Taylor Greene. And I think that we have to think about moderation. And a lot of times in the American system, we really provide entertainment instead of information. And I really think that a lot of political issues have been reduced to a very cheap form of entertainment. And that's what's fomenting the political extremism. That's what creates these ideas of modern medicine is all corrupt or there's only modern medicine and that you should not engage in any sort of holistic healing. And this is a big problem because it creates this false binary. Really, we have to think about things in a way that everything has a solution, but it's obviously not always one way or another. There has to be some compromise. What do you see as the solution for mass shootings? I mean, we have obviously more guns in the United States. Uh, we have an equal number of people with mental health issues as other countries, but it seems like, you know, but it's clear year after year after year, we have far more mass shootings than most industrialized nations combined. Well, I think the bill that President Biden just signed with the support of several Republicans is actually a good start. And of course, nobody's happy, right? Because any sort of move to restrict guns by the right is seen as an attack on the Second Amendment. And a lot of people on the left really would like to see a more Australia style solution where they just started taking away guns, which is a non-starter in the United States. The thing about the gun problem is it's very complicated, David. You can't make them expensive because it's unconstitutional, so taxes are very limited. Uh, you, A lot of gun legislation is based on cosmetics instead of actual damage. Your constitutional right to a handgun, which you can conceal, that's really the most dangerous weapon out there. And a lot of laws, while they are well intended, really don't do anything to solve the problem. Here in Los Angeles, where I'm sitting right now, I'm pretty certain I can buy an illegal gun very fast for less than $200. And I think we have to realize that reality. And that doesn't mean that we shouldn't do anything, but we have to recognize that guns are a part of American society. And if we are to attack the problem, which they were starting to, and it's unfortunate that it took this long for there to be action, especially when the majority of Americans agree that something should be done. We have to understand that we are limited in our policy tools to control the gun problem in America. And yet one of the things that is not limited in America is insurance. And I've heard a number of people come up with this sort of creative idea of rather than having the government try to mitigate guns, why not we force everybody to have liability insurance for their weapons? And then that way the insurance industry, just as it does with cars and with health insurance, they're the ones who are essentially cracking the whip and making sure that people have proper guns, that there aren't people who shouldn't have guns. And we leave it up to the insurance industry to figure this out. 
I think that's a great solution. And I think about it like climate change as well. You know, if the government doesn't want to act on climate change and now the Supreme Court just said that, you know, the government can't regulate coal plants, power plants. And I think really it's the insurance companies who are ahead of the curve on climate change because they're not going to insure your house in Miami on the ocean if it's going to be underwater in 30 years. So I actually think that's a very innovative solution. America has the most innovative private sector in the world. And I think that's very thoughtful and pragmatic and a way of really institutionalizing change. And in the meantime, do you see uh, the gun violence issue getting worse in part because we're still, you know, we're not that far away removed from the pandemic and all sorts of mental health issues that uh, have cropped up all over the place? I don't see an easy solution for it, David. And, you know, I think all of us are concerned, especially when it involves children, if we have children and in their schools and in our houses of worship and just at Walmart or in a public place, I, I think all of us have that visceral fear of, you know, being a victim of a mass shooting. You know, uh, I'm from Orlando, Florida. I know people who died at the Pulse nightclub. So we've all been touched by this tragedy. And unfortunately, it is a nasty, nasty mark on America. Yeah, and you get the sense that there's so many mass shootings that uh, literally everybody's gonna know somebody in some community has been affected by this. In any case, David Grasso, CEO of Bold TV. David, thanks for being on the program, great to see you. Always great to see you, David, thank you so much. Take care.